Flash announcement, this video along with lots of others are now available on Free TV, a streaming service in addition to the Smartwatch Ticks channel on YouTube. We're part of the Free TV Creators Clubhouse, about a hundred YouTubers who've been selected to showcase on TV. Head on over to bit.ly slash free TV clubhouse. You'll be launched right into the creators section or you can simply download the free TV app through Android, Apple, Roku, whatever streaming device you've got free and link into us from there. Just click the creators tab. Here we go. This may be the one we're actually looking for guys. Greetings and welcome to SmartwatchTix.com. Bears come. Can I say that on TV? We have a new partner. Bears come is bringing us a beautiful smartwatch health fitness focused that rivals all the ones we've seen before that do ECG and heart rate and blood oxygen and you name it. This is it. It's called the BC... G08. And I'm not kidding. Bears come. A winner's over. Hibernation is over. Things are waking up. ECG, blood oxygen, heart rate, so forth and so forth. This is uh, available now and about $90. Hopefully got a discount coupon for you as well. I want to go over a lot of the stuff it talks about because the technology in this supersedes what we've looked at already. You can do the ECG reading anytime, anywhere. You can see it on the screen of the watch, or you can take it through the H-Band app and have it recorded in the app for later use. It's using this OSRAM high-end chip, the fast 30-second capture for um, uh, high-precision cardiac electrical signals, and it really works, gang. I got an ECG to show you when Uncle Tix was in a yet another atrial flutter situation. Took it right on this watch. It worked perfectly. Uh, so forth and so on. Um, it's got um, data collection at any time. You're using core technology in this one that includes a multi-channel optical design with seven optical path, six LED light sources, three different electrodes, multiple colors and wavelengths to extract different levels of skin data, and a more powerful new algorithm monitoring, low power consumption, and it really is, it lasts a long time, and of course, more accurate data monitoring. A built-in GR5515 CPU for those who track that kind of stuff, a, a large uh, LCD screen, 240 by 240, and it's good and clear. Uh, new generation Bluetooth 5.1 for your overall connectivity to your phone. It's got a Fresnel optical lens, which is a more accurate optical measurement technology. I'm going to show you that on the bottom of it. Stronger light penetration is what you get. The built-in lens make the scattered light parallel when the light passes through, making it easier for the sensor to collect the data. All these little new nuances that we don't even know about are on this new Bears Come smartwatch. Infrared lights here too for blood oxygen. Continuous blood oxygen trafficking is a big part of this. And they and I want you to know all of this stuff. I know. It's not a medical device. It's for reference only and should only be used... Uh, for your own information and not used for clinical diagnosis. Uh, 18 or older um, and not applicable for, for those diagnosed with arrhythmia and so on and so on. Please be careful with any of these watches. Uh, they sound like a whole lot of fun and they are, but they're just for information only. Okay, I know you want to move on. So do I. Here we got it. Let's take a look at it. We Pop out the beautiful packaging. It's very nicely done. We've got a little cover in here. The module itself sits right in here. You can pop it out of that, and we will dive into this in a minute. And you got an insert, and you got bands, different colors. This looks like brown leather we're going to put on this one. And then we've got the manual and a quality control little card here in Chinese and English. Inside the box, is of course your little charging cable and uh, it is a standard two pin small uh, connection two pin um, magnetic charger 
hooks right on the side easy to operate plugs into your usb no data changed through the cable now the data transfer to the app happens through bluetooth so when we look at the module we take the cover off of it it's just a little protective film you notice that you got two buttons on the side and on this side you've got this little looks like a pill button but that's actually the ecg electrode the casing is beautiful you get black or silver like this Bands go on. You've got two electrodes. Now you're getting to the fun stuff. The charging ports. And check it out. You see that middle one? Looks like somebody wearing eyeglasses. That's that new uh, paralleling lens to push the light, light into your skin deeper to get better readings. You got three green ones. You got red. You got infrared. This puppy is sophisticated. Now, before I jump in and go into the details of it. Let's look at the app. I want to tell you the distinctions between this one and some of the ones we've seen. Okay, temperature monitoring. Oh, these are 11, 12, and so forth. Wow, where does one start? Ah, I think we go across. Okay, so we've got this, the device structure, the disassembly and where. There's the QR code for the H-Band app. That's really what you're looking for. Uh, to tether with this as many of the ones we've already seen case in point they are basically the e 400 500 and 600 that we've already reviewed i'm just pausing these so you can freeze from if you want to read them in detail we'll go over all of it in the watch the e 400 is the closest to this one it's a round watch very very similar to it by way of comparison the E400, 500, and 600 supposedly do blood glucose measurements. It has that capability in it. Jury's still out on whether it's accurate or not. We're getting feedback from users saying it seems like it's simulated, but I don't know for sure. This one does not have um, blood glucose. So if you're looking for a health smartwatch that can do that, diabetic or whatever, pass on this one it's not going to have it in it but most of us don't need it me included it's an interesting thing to look at but i don't know anything about what the number means unless i prick my finger so uh, no blood glucose this does have the ability you'll see here to have an ecg chart displayed on the watch the round e400 does not it can do an ECG, but it only shows you the uh, assumed heart rate. And that data doesn't transfer to the app for either of these when you take it locally. But you can actually get a reading here like you could on the E500. Remember the E500, the Apple looking? We got reviews on this, a comparison video, all of that's here. So check it out. Um, it does do the ECG. Uh, what it does not do is uh, fit in a chest strap. So if you're only planning to use it as a watch and not try to wear it as a chest strap or a hand uh, thing, if you've seen the other reviews, you know what I'm talking about. The PTT function is not in this one, and there's no compatible thing that you can snap it into to do that kind of a reading. With that said, let's put it together and see what it does do. With two buttons, we press the top one, give it a moment, and it vibrates and pops into a downloaded face I added here from the, uh, the face store that's built into the H-Band app. Really, really sweet. Come down, you get all these, and they're really in 3D coloring. I'm going to make this a bit dimmer. First, I'll make it brighter. It's plenty bright to see outdoors. I take it down to like the first level. It's right nice for, out, uh, for nighttime. And here we are with... Uh, a decent one for doing the review. We can change the auto lockout from as little as I think three or four seconds and we can go all the way up to about 30 seconds. So we're gonna, eh, there we go, 25. That's plenty for the review. Now it won't time out on us. Okay, do not disturb us here. Find your phone. You've got information which tells you this is the G08 and uh, remote picture if you want to use this as a trigger with your tether to the app to take a photograph and of course your overall settings here's where we have the screen and display which we just looked at you also have sometimes it's sluggish when you try to scrape across it here you have a health monitor where you can turn on or off all of these things you can do heart rate monitoring heart rate alert blood pressure monitoring blood oxygen monitor it at night and 
um, get your low level alert if your blood oxygen drops too low, which is really great because that could wake you up possibly if you're having a sleep apnea event. And then your overall sleep time all day monitors are capable too. Turning those off will give you a little bit longer battery life, but you have great battery life on this anyway, several days it appears, so that's not much of an issue. Your sedentary reminder, a disconnection alert if you're too far from your phone and you lose Bluetooth connection, and then you twist your wrist to see the time. This is only available here. It's not in that drop-down menu, so at night you have to kind of go into settings, go over here, turn that off. Yeah, it's a little bit of an extra step, but it's in there anyway. You've got your um, notifications. This is where you can have it send information about an incoming call, including who's calling if they're on your list, your text messages, and then all these other different uh, services if you subscribe to any of them, and others from your phone. And you can set all that up in the app as well, but you can turn them on and off directly here, which is not very often uh, you see that on watches. We've got lots of different languages. English is what we're choosing. Uh, your European and your Chinese uh, languages are there. And then you've got the H-Band app, the QR code. You scan that to pair to this watch, download the app, use that to pair, and you're, and you're good to go. Everything works uh, smoothly. Your overall system, there's the information. You can erase the data, which is like a factory restore, or you can simply power the watch off. And we saw that again uh, from up here when we um, hit the information uh, tab right there. So your overall system stuff uh, for that is not very extensive. But this is identical to the operating system on the E400, 500, and 600 with just a few exceptions. So let's go through them. Come over this way. You got your step count for the day. Nothing else on the screen here, um, but your distance and uh, calories burned. You see more, of course, in the app. Here is a 24-hour heart rate. Land on here. If you've got the diode, see the three are green, these ones. If you've got the diodes covered with it on your arm, a really nice place to do all of these tests is right here because our skins are all pretty much the same color, no hair. A uh, really nice place if you want more accurate readings than if you're freckled or a lot of hair or tattooed or whatever. But you'll get your heart rate eventually there. This is blood pressure. Bounces up and down using green diodes. And see, it's giving me XXXs because I didn't have it in place. But you'll get your systolic and diastolic readings on here as well. Then you get into ECG. I'm going to come back to that. We'll show you that. Blood oxygen, that's using the red diodes and probably that infrared diode right there uh, to give you the calculation for blood oxygen. And it has to be connected so you'll see it. It's not going to read out of thin air. Check it out now. We have temperature on this Fahrenheit or centigrade. I probably need it on my body to get a good reading. It should stay warm for a while when you take it off and take a little while to heat up. So give it about 10 minutes before you get your reading. It does the skin temperature, but there's an algorithm to tell you what your body temperature should be as well. Here's last night's sleep. Overall total, nothing else shown, but your deep sleep is here. Uh, three out of five uh, is the, the level of sleep quality, I guess. Anyway, there's a lot more from the uh, app that you can get to. Now, I'm going to cover up my stuff here. It shows you your location and the current temperature. And uh, you've got a four, small forecast down there and a weather condition lit up at the top. And that's, of course, settable inside the app if you want centigrade or Fahrenheit. And then we're back to the watch faces. Press and hold. We got some really nice ones. That's a downloaded custom one. This is one you can put your own picture on it and such. This one I like a lot. That's a nice digital one. Shows you a lot of different things. When you've got your heart rate, it'll show it right there. Time, date, all of that. Your distance traveled. Uh, when you come over here, you've got another nice digital analog uh, style of watch face. And they're all kind of subdued within that outer bezel, um, which is pretty attractive. This is fun. This one I use a lot because the background changes based on the actual weather. There's your temperature, high and low, other information, time down to the second, and you're in a cockpit. And it's like you're looking out the window. It was rainy the other day. Now, even that is too bright. Look at this. It's really a bright watch. I'm going to take it down and make it softer so you can see the subtleties of the clouds without them all washing out. 
Anyway, this is a fun watch face, and that's one I highly recommend, as well as lots of them you can download, which are from the app. And we're going to look at that after I show you the ECG. So obviously I need to have it on to do the ECG reading. So here you go with the band, with the watch itself. It's a very attractive dress watch. Or you could put a sports band if you want to on here and make it playful and outdoors. Can get a little bit wet. I uh, got the IP rating, but don't go diving and stuff like that with it. So I can get into the EC ECG again sliding across here. Once I'm here, wow, 133. Interesting. Let's see what we're at right now. Nowadays, I don't even know if Mr. Tix is in a, uh, an event moment or what. So I've touched my thumb over on the side. You notice I can touch my skin and stuff. They usually say don't touch the rest of your body with the opposing hand. But once this thing settles down, it seems to do great. Now I'm getting a live ECG chart. How do I know it's live? I can wiggle a little bit. Give it a few seconds. It's about a three, four second delay. And you see how that changed right there? Uh-huh. It's giving me an interpolated heart rate at the bottom and then a look at my ECG. Now, if you're familiar with the basics of what an ECG looks like, you can deduce from the heart rate and what you're seeing in the picture as to whether or not you might want to hook up to the app and get a much more detailed uh, analysis. It says sinus rhythm, which basically means it's fine. And it does say not for medical use. That will redo it. You can do it again. It's not saving that. It's not going to transfer it to the app. That would be really cool if it did. But you can take it from the app. Here we go. I'm going to jump right into this. It's the H-Band app from the Google Play Store. That's what it looks like. It's what you're going to download. You download it. You set it up. We got reviews of this on every one of the ones we've already done. So I'm skipping all that and taking you guys into ECG, okay? Here we go. Here are some ECG readings that I did uh, already today and it's very simple you just hit start testing you get yourself in position and ready you hit the start button you hold the electrode you can do it just with one finger if you want to or I, I typically like to brace the case on the other side it's going to be noisy at first you see it going there it's not working with the screen at all the screen is doing whatever you've got it on right now it's telling time and when it's ready to time out it'll just go off it's doing the ECG reading in the background. Now, not only heart rate, 72 bits per, beats per minute you see in the upper left, but you're getting a QT interval, you're getting heart rate variability, you're getting the actual chart, and it's showing you the computational tab right in the middle of the, of the screen. When it is done, you can choose to save it or cancel. I'm going to confirm. And when you do, you can go into ECG details. The whole waveform is there. You get the breakdown of this information, the assessment that the AI in here is giving you for information purposes only. You can get a waveform report right here, which is going to give you all of this stuff broken down. These are one second intervals. So it's showing you I'm about, what was a 60 some odd, so that's about the width of a second, which is appropriate. These are the RR peaks in an ECG, and that's what it's computing the heart rate on, is the time delay between each of these. Heart rate variability is the difference between the width of these, because they don't happen at exactly the same time. And you got this whole chart. And of course, that can be exported if you want to as well. You can do it in playback. You can do it up to five times speed. You can start it up. And if you want to have a real quick look at how it's going, five times faster than normal, there you go, or whatever speed you want. And you can turn it sideways. I believe you have to stop it first, and then you can turn it and end. There we go. And turn it and then start it again at your five times speed. So if you want to see it, broader and wider you've got that as well and it's just simply repeating itself so gain frequency all of that stuff uh very very sophisticated uh capabilities on this one let's get back out of here let's go back to the beginning and walk you quickly through all of the other ones oh 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 before we leave ecg i want to take you to yesterday all of these were okay 72 67 68 here's yesterday there's one I did later, but before that, look at this. I had a heart rate of 140, had the watch on. I was able to um, run this test 
while I was in the middle of atrial, fib atrial flutter. It's so much easier to say than fibrillation. <laughs> fib, 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 you know, the F word? Well, not that F word. The fibrillation where, uh, is where there's a lot of difference in spacing between these. You have irregular heartbeat. Flutter is where you have like a regular heartbeat, but it's really fast, as if I had been working out really hard. Fitbit loves it. Gives me all kinds of credit for really, you know, I've done run another marathon, but it's not really a healthy thing to be. But you can see it's telling me I got these kind of uh, issues going on, and it lets me uh, work with that with my health professional if I want to. So it does indeed capture this kind of information, and it'll be in the chart that's saved in the app as long as you start the testing from the app Bluetooth to the watch. Is that clear? If you take it from the watch, you can see it, which I did while I was out doing yard work. That's when I put the weed whacker down and came in as I got information, confirmation from an ECG chart actually on the watch that things weren't normal. And that led me to where I am now talking to you guys. Here's your daily pedometer thing. Every hour is shown and the steps that you've taken during that time frame. Copious amounts of uh, data in this. Last night's sleep information. Again, I'm not really convinced that this is very accurate because I honestly believe you spend more time in these different sleep zones than uh, one or two minutes. But red is a uh, rim and awake and all of this stuff. Uh, I would take this with a grain of salt. In fact, I can't even figure out how I would make assessment other than I was dreaming a lot before I woke up but intermittently between deep and light? I don't think so. But maybe they'll fix that eventually. But this has been characteristic of the H-band for years. This is what it looks like. If you really want sleep uh, monitoring, you got to wear a different band to bed for that. But you want to wear this band to, to bed for sure for uh, HRV and stuff. Before we get there, let's look at heart rate. This is your actual heart rate. Now, it's not showing you when you tap on it, but it's there. And uh, the white is your exercise, amount of exercise. So it's kind of clocking how your heart rate's doing versus exercise. Uh, and that's good. Obviously, heart rate should go up the more you exercise. But if heart rate goes way up and you're not exercising, then go take an ECG and see what you're getting there. Breaks down the categories. Here's your actual deep, deep details. Your heart rate every minute of a five minute window, right? Uh, if you've got it set up for that continuously. It'll also automatically tell you if you're sedentary, walking, running, uh, based on uh, monitoring, I guess, what you're, what you're doing. And if you're not connected, it'll tell you that. If it's not getting data during that five minute period, it'll let you know. So very, very intelligent on how it's doing the uh, overall uh, heart rate stuff. Now you get to HRV. This is only overnight. It's showing you your chart from when you went to bed to when you woke up. And you can touch here and get values on it. You get an overall health index. And this is the amazing Lorenz scatter diagram. These all have different kind of shapes based on what might be happening to you. And it tells you what that could possibly be that you could check with your doctor for deeper uh information if it looks like that. Normally they look like this comet with a little tail at the bottom. Mine's kind of broad and wide down there. Uh, I don't see any that do that. So once again, I'm pretty unique with whatever's going on in my ticker. Uh, and then you get this, this information. If I go back yesterday, it looks like the same chart, but there's no chart here. It didn't record properly. I took it off last last night before last, just to test it, and it stopped recording right there. And the rest of the night, there wasn't any data. So there wasn't enough to give me a, a, a an actual chart. So it's showing whatever your last one was. Notice it jumps there, it changed. That's what it looks like the night before that with its data. Now if I go forward, it retains that one. So be very careful when you're reading the charts to make sure that it's changing between days because if it didn't compute one, it's actually just going to show you um, the last one. It doesn't make it clean. Here's today. I just want to show you HRV data. Again, these are the millisecond differences between adjacent heart beats and the Lorenz scatter diagram is comparing this one against that one. 
that one against that one and making a dot on that chart. And that's how you get the actual scatter diagram. And they've been smart enough to figure out what it all means. Blood pressure, systolic, diastolic, lows and highs, measurement times, your actual readings every five minutes. Again, blood pressure is a hard one for these devices to get really accurate, so make sure you check against your calibrated equipment. Blood oxygen, lots of data possibly derived here. You can get, you can see that in a window of the time it's taking it, I'm in a range between 96 and 99, fluctuating quite a bit, actually. If you have sleep apnea going on, it'll tell you how many events you've had. It tells you all kinds of other stuff. This is exactly the same as the... Uh, E400, E500, and E600. Hypoxia on arousal, turn that on. And if it drops too low, it should vibrate the watch to wake you up, to let you know you might be holding your breath or in a sleep apnea. And then it gives you some uh, information about what sleep apnea is and what you can do about it and what causes it, and more and more and more. All that's built into the H-Band app. For any of these watches, you can get that information. Body temperature, here you go, you get an abnormal one and it'll just kind of show up, 94. Otherwise, you'll get a range during the time frame it's taking uh, those measurements and it just continues to add to it throughout the day. And if you want to know the specific range on a particular time, it's right here in Fahrenheit or centigrade and you can set it to do this automatic temperature monitoring. Switch that to all centigrade if you want to. This is your interpolated body temperature. This is what it's actually measuring. See how it jumps back and forth. Around an average of 88 degrees for the skin temperature, but supposedly internally, I'm at around 98.6 and below. Okay. <sighs> and of course, we can change days. The calendar lets you just jump through any day faster. And that's it. You can move these modules around in any order that you want to. I've set them up in an order that I like particularly, but out of the box, uh, they'll be slightly different than that. Workouts now. This is fun. This ties into the GPS of your phone. If you take your phone with your watch, you can actually get an e uh, a uh, track, a GPS track which when I bring it in here and I zoom in close enough, you can start to see it develop. This is me walking and running around my house and all over the place, out just out and about, 100 feet or so less, uh, and it's just showing the overall path from beginning to end. It also shows some basic information at the bottom with that chart as well. So you have that ability to collect information in the app as long as you initiate it from within the app, just like on the uh, the ECG. Mine is where you set up your information. It's a GO8. You can turn on and off all these different switches, personal blood pressure reading you can put in. If you're not 120 over 80 and you know what you are from your doctor, you can put that in here, and that'll uh, start to calibrate the blood pressure reading against that. Notice that now it's 25 seconds. We changed it on the watch. It changed it in the app, but I could change it from here if I wanted to to anything you want, up to 30 seconds. So I confirmed that and save it, and now it's even longer. Weather settings, centigrade Fahrenheit, switch settings, all these different switches that are turned on in the uh, watch if you want to, or you can turn them on or off right here in the app. Flexibility both ways. Firmware upgrades, factory reset, disconnect the watch, update your own information here, or change your nickname, help, step goal, sleep. You got it, pretty much. That's everything. So, once again, this little puppy is a really sweet, all-encompassing health watch that can do live ECG charts on the watch, can do recorded ECG charts in the app, does not do, do uh, blood glucose readings, but pretty much everything else. It is not capable of putting in a little chest strap and running a unlimited ECG back and forth. For that, you need the E400. But if you don't need blue blood glucose and you want ECG charts on the watch, this S08 is probably the winner for you. And 
You can get it from... Da, 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 da. I know you know the name of this one, don't you? The Bears Come Company. Aha, uh-huh, the BCG08, and it's available now. Check the show notes. We should have a link for sure for you, and I hope a good discount off of its $90 price. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Once again, you're not restricted to watching Smartwatch Ticks on YouTube. You now can head over to any TV you've got, any streaming device you've got, and launch us from Free TV. We're on the uh, Free TV Creators Clubhouse. That's here at bit.ly slash Free TV Clubhouse. Or you can just simply download the Free TV app right now on your Android, your iPhone, your Roku, your streaming sticks of choice, Launch over there to the Creators tab, and boom, you'll find Smartwatch Ticks available for you. And we have some premieres happening on free TV before they hit YouTube. Check it out.